Hello, welcome to Stone Magpie for a whip and chat whilst doing the Diamond Art Club Partners in Crime diamond painting. You may have seen from the surround that I've done quite a lot of this now, so I'm going to reveal the section we'll be working on today and at the end of the video I'll show you all of the diamond painting on this kit so far. So this is the section we're going to be working on today. And as you can see, it is quite AB heavy on the headband of Harley Quinn. So we're going to work on this. Whether we get the whole section finished today is another matter. And um, let's see how we get on. So I'm going to start down this side with this small N symbol here which is a beautiful red color look at that stunning red here we are and if you've not seen my videos before then i am absolutely adoring the new diamond art club canvases they are so fantastic so much better than the other one that I did before they changed the canvas to having the grid really nice and tight together. It's just a joy to work on. Do let me know in the comments below if you're finding the same with the Diamond Dark Club kits. Let me know if you're preferring the fact that they are so tight and click lovely into place. It really does, I find, help with the square diamonds because of the placements of them. They sit so tight together that I don't need to do a lot of what I call faffing. <laughs> I am very fussy where my placements go and how the diamonds sit. And so if I'm not working on a grid that is this tight, I spend so much time doing this. I'll show you, sort of pushing the diamonds into place like so and making sure they're nicely square. So on a canvas like this, it's a, a time saving for me not to have to do that because they sit so well together, so flush, so straight. So. Um, I hope that you're finding that too. Or perhaps you're just not as fussy as me. <laughs> and that's fine. You know, I, I recognise myself as a little bit of a perfectionist. And um, yeah, I, I own up to it. I am and I can't help it. So, yeah. Isn't this red absolutely beautiful? So gorgeous. And the whole kit has such amazing colours in it. Which you'll probably see a lot of them now in the portion that you can see here. But you just wait till I show you the whole picture um, because... You can see the ABs as well around the whole thing is just stunning. And because there, are, there is a lot of colour blocking on this picture, it's taking a lot less time than what I'm used to with quite a lot of confetti in my canvases. So this one is going pretty quick. Not that we want to wish our time away when we're doing our canvases, but if you like to see um, good progress, quite quick progress whilst you're working on your painting, then you may well like this one. I have to say though, it was a limited edition with Diamond Art Club and it is sold out. So I am sorry if I'm teasing you a little bit like that, but um, Diamond Art Club do bring out limited editions quite regularly. So if you see one that you like, then I recommend you grab it quickly because once they're gone, they're gone with the limited editions unless you can find um, people who are selling them on. If you are in the UK, there is a great Facebook page where people 
do sell their Diamond Art Club paintings. So you may want to have a look at that as well. You know, people like to collect them and then for whatever reason, they decide to de-stash. So you can pick up discontinued kits there as well as current ones too. I think I was just slightly offline there, so I will have to do a quick faff. Just to make sure they're nicely lined up. When I first started this kit, I wasn't quite sure how close they would sit, so I was sticking to putting my diamonds down attached to another diamond, um, if that makes sense. So anywhere that was joining with others so that I knew the placements were right. But now I'm a lot more confident that if I put them where they indicate, they will sit beautifully together. So I am now able to move across the section without worrying about it too much. So I hope that you've all had a wonderful time diamond painting since I last saw you. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I do try and encourage new diamond painters to the craft. It is such a wonderful, relaxing project to do. It really does allow the brain to stop and you can focus on wonderful colours and because it is indicated where all the colours need to go, you don't need to think too much about it. All you have to do is follow the grid, follow the guide down the side. If you've not diamond painted before, you're doing a canvas with a guide. So for example, you would see you've got crosses here the cross is number 947, so depending on how you kit up, Diamond Art Club always provide the ready printed labels and as you can see, you can choose whether you kit up by the number, one, two, whatever, the symbol or this number here, which is the DMC number. Each colour has a DMC number that relates to the colour. So that's what that is. I find it easier to kit up by symbol. Because I'm working on the canvas, I hardly ever refer to the legend down the side. However, you may find your own process and decide that you want to kit up in number order using one, two, whatever the last number is on the kit. So once you've decided how you're going to kit up, you look at the canvas, you see that it's an X, you can refer to this, take out the colour it refers to, tip some into your diamond tray and then put those diamonds in those positions. And then you move on to the next symbol and so on. And that is how you diamond paint. And because it is that simple, it really does mean that your mind can just drift to what you're doing and it just relaxes you. It, it's just time for you to take you away from any everyday stresses. You don't have to think about anything. And I just find it wonderful for that. And I know a lot of other people do too. And at the end of it, you have a beautiful painting that you can display to show off to others. It's fabulous. And yes, we call it painting. There's no paint involved at all, but you're painting with these beautiful sparkly diamonds, which have a finish all of their own. There is no way that you can get a finish like a diamond painting any way else. And you can start anywhere on a canvas. I always start top right. I'm left-handed and I just think for me it's easier to start there. But if you wanted to start in the middle of the canvas and work outwards, you can. 
there are no rules apart from popping the colours in the right place. And even then, you know, if you wanted to experiment a little bit, then you can. You can have your creativity in that way if you wanted to. And you may wonder how all of the diamonds are sticking to the canvas if you're new. Well, the protective layer, which I pulled back right at the beginning, protects this sticky surface. Can you hear that? It is sticky. So when you place your diamonds onto the grid, it sticks automatically. So you don't have to apply any glue. All you're doing is placing the colours where you want them. Need a few more of these, so tip them out in the tray. Shake the tray gently. These, All these tools come in the toolkit. This is a special diamond pen though. That is a resin pen that I bought separately. Usually the kits come with this type of pen, which is fine. It's a basic pen. This is the one that came with this kit from Diamond Art Club and we can use them. They're very lightweight. They usually do have the squidgy included with the Diamond Art Club. And we can diamond paint with this. I'm not sure if I've got any, yeah, the wax is fine. It also comes with this palette of wax here from Diamond Art Club. They do the lovely heart-shaped wax. And all you do is dip your nib. It's called a nib, although there is, it's not like a pen because there's no ink in it. This is to pick up the wax. You dip it in like that. And can you see there's some pink wax right at the end? And that gives you a little bit of a sticky surface in order to pick up the diamonds. This end picks up individually, so one diamond at a time, like so. And this end picks up, this one is a four placer, so it picks up four diamonds or less at a time. See, I've picked up three there. And it just means that it's a little bit quicker because you're placing three diamonds at a time rather than one at a time. So I hope that helps any new diamond painters. Oh, please let me know if you're new to diamond painting. I'd love to know. Anybody out there that has loads of diamond painting experience, give me a shout as well. Leave me a comment, let me know. Yes, I've never asked that actually, I don't think. How many diamond paintings have you done? Are you keeping count or not? I know a lot of diamond painters have a log and they keep um, like a notebook or an electronic log of the diamond paintings that they've got where from, the size, how many colours and how many they've completed, if they've given them away. You know, it's quite nice to keep a log. I haven't really done that, to be fair. I think, um, oh, obviously a log of diamond paintings in your stash. And a stash is when you've bought some diamond paintings and you haven't started them yet. That's what we call a stash. And um, honestly, it's so addictive that we end up buying lots of kits to have waiting to start on. <laughs> I certainly know I have. Um, <laughs> so perhaps that you log all your stash. Yeah, oh dear. I don't know if I should log my stash. <laughs> um, I do sometimes give kits away though, because... Um, I do like looking around at different kits, at different price points, etc. I love showing them on my channel and um, I do try and rein it in a little bit. But yes, if I've ordered quite a few and, for example, I did give some kits away to school, to 
to a school, a primary school locally, and I did send some kits off to a homeless project, things like that. So, yeah, I tidied out my stash a little bit, which was great. So this is the X that I showed you earlier. Look at that bright orange. Wow, it's juicy. Just can't not be happy when you're working with just such fantastic colours. And Diamond Art Club diamonds are beautiful. They really are stunning diamonds. You may well have seen this fellow here beside me. And I don't think I'm going to be using him very much for this kit. Let me show you. This is my amazing feather. Look at that. Can you see the colour change on the edges here? Now, what happened, the story with this is that I was on Facebook and a local seller popped up with a feather design of a resin tray. And she'd done like grey swirls within the feather and I thought it looked fantastic. So I contacted her and asked if she could do a magpie feather for me. And she sent me a picture and I said, well, actually, I think I'd like a white middle and a black outer. I sent her a picture of a real magpie feather because they're very distinctive. But I said the black have these flashes of electric blue and green in a magpie when you see them in certain lights they're just stunning and I of course wanted a little bit of sparkle too and she sent me a picture of what she's done and I loved it it's bigger than I thought it was going to be it's a whopper and this is what I'm going to use for my trash diamonds so it's sat here waiting for any trash diamonds and that means any diamonds that might have holes in them don't sit flush. As you can see, all of these diamonds sit beautifully and I can't see any holes or anything wrong with any of these diamonds at all. <laughs> so I don't think my feather is going to have many diamonds in from this kit at all but it's sat here just in case. If you would like to contact the seller, as I say, she's local to me. I'll cover up her telephone number, but you can see here on her card, Lindsay's Crafty Creations, handmade personalized gifts for all occasions. Find her on Facebook and you may well have your own design idea like I did. Have a look. You can contact Lindsay. I did check whether she was happy to ship internationally and she said she was, but obviously the postage would have an impact on that. If you're in the UK, check the price. I paid £9, but I did go to her house and collect it. So I'm not sure what the postage would have been, um, but it's great size. Look, my, this is my hand here. Look at that. It's fabulous. Oh, I love it. So thank you, Lindsay, for doing that for me and for being so open to my idea of what I wanted. I think she's done a great job in the magpie feather. So yes, got a new trash tray. But as I say, I'm not sure how useful it's going to be for the Diamond Art Club diamonds because they are so good. Again, if you're new to diamond painting, you get a choice of square or round diamonds when you choose a kit. And round diamonds can be a bit more forgiving. And it, they're exactly the same, but a round shape. And um, with squares, you do have the extra problems if they don't sit flush. If I see any problems, I will point them out to you during the video. Um, so sometimes you tend to get a bit more trash with the squares because of that. You know, if they've got little um, parts of plastic on the sides of them that I call nobules, then they just won't sit tight enough together. So you need to um, trash those ones really or use them in 
other projects like a jar you can fill up jars with trash and things like that so just I wouldn't use them on a diamond painting but I am extra fussy so I think I just put a red one in there oh well so my pot will probably have a friend in there but it doesn't matter, I can sort them out once I've finished the diamond painting and I'm putting all of my leftovers in my storage. I can sort that out then. Right, we're going to go on number one and I know this is a red AB like these ones here. Ooh, they're just beautiful. They are like little jewels, they really are. And if you've not heard of AB before, that stands for Aurora Borealis, which hence why we call them AB. <laughs> and they have a coating on the colour. So they are red diamonds, but they have this coating which creates all of those different colours on the top. So you can see purples, greens, yellows, oh, all sorts of different colours. And so when it catches the light, they shine and glimmer. They are absolutely beautiful. Not all diamond painting kits have that in them. And if you're placing ABs onto your diamond painting, it is better to use a plastic end rather than a metal end because sometimes, not always, but sometimes the metal end can crack the AB coating. So, try and use a plastic end to place your ABs. Also, if you have newly applied wax in the end of your pen, it can stick to the AB coating and drag it off a little bit. So just be aware of that as well. Um, I did get a tip from a diamond painter once to use a little bit of water if that's the case. You'll know who you are if you're watching. I've not tried it yet. So if you want to have a go at that, then please do. Oh, my wax has just dropped out, I think, there. So I got a bit of wax on my canvas. Can you see that? That was from the nib. So I will have to put some new wax in the nib when I start doing single placements again. I'll leave it for now because I'm using my multi-placer here. So I hope that any newbies watching have gleaned some sort of information from this video because I am aware that I don't always explain the terminology etc when I'm doing videos. So I'm trying to include a little bit during the whip and chats with some stories of what I've got up to recently. And that's what I'm going to go on to next. <laughs> oh, Cause I do get up to some adventures and a little bit of mischief sometimes. And um, I don't know, some people seem to quite enjoy hearing the stories of my escapade, shall we say. Um, so what have I been up to? Well, I did go and visit my son in the city. If you've not seen my channel before, I live in a very quiet village in Yorkshire and my son moved out to the city. Big smoke, but not London. <laughs> um, he moved out to Leeds and so I go and see him every now and again. Um, and this week, well, last week, he rang and said, could I go and see him at the weekend? So I got on the bus. <laughs> yes, I have risked the bus journey again. Oh, yeah, see, I'm trying to single place without any wax in with a metal tip. So there's my claw. If you've seen this before, I call it the claw. It's a bent nose plastic end that you do get with some diamond pens and it's perfect for the AB diamonds. Yes, yeah, so I went and got on the bus and you know, 
The bus journey into Leeds is fabulous. The characters that got on the bus, um, I was sat thinking, this is a journey that I need to tell people because it went from being very green, I do live out very close to countryside, and we travelled through a place called Harewood, and Harewood is like a country house, and it's got grounds with it, and you can visit the grounds. I'm trying to do it again. I need to concentrate. <laughs> um, yes, you can you can visit the grounds, and you can go around Harewood House, and the bus goes past there. And if you're very lucky, whilst you're on the bus, you can see the deer. Oh, they are so beautiful. You have to be very lucky to see them. And the bus is a double-decker. So if you go upstairs and look out over the countryside, you're more likely to spot them there. So that is beautiful. And you're going through all of the green landscape. It is stunning. Very, very lucky to live where I live. And then as you're heading into Leeds, you go through Old Woodley, which um, has all the beautiful houses as we're going down. And then you go past um, mosques and parks and different dance centres and the Sikh temple and all of the different areas of Leeds and it's really really interesting. Now what I found interesting this time was a place called Chapeltown and in Chapeltown they were starting to prepare for a West Indian carnival the next day. Um, so there were people out on the street, there were people in huddles talking to each other, and it just had a really amazing vibe to it. When I was traveling back home, they were setting out like music on big loudspeakers and different type of food stalls and things and people were sat outside the shops and as I say there was a really good happy party vibe and I didn't get off the bus or anything I was just sat on the bus but I was trying to take it all in just incredible so if you get chance if you visit Yorkshire Try going on the 36 bus. It goes all the way from Leeds to Ripon and back again. And I just think it's a really interesting journey. Code A, which is this very, very deep, very purple red. Look at that. Another beautiful colour. And if you're wondering why I'm shaking, if you're new to diamond painting, you're wondering why I'm shaking the tray. It's because then they all line up. You don't have to get them all lined up. It might take you quite a while. Just give it a little tap on the end like that. And then it shoves them together. But you can still see some are turned over still. It doesn't matter because I'm going to use these and then I'll probably shake the tray again. Just to explain what I'm doing there. And with these ones, these are not ABs, so I may well use my nib again. I'll get some more wax in, just in case. So I'm just dipping it, wiggling it a bit. And I, t I tend to dip it twice, push the wax in. Sometimes I even have a bit of kitchen roll beside me and I'll give it a little bit of a, just a press on to get rid of any ex excess off the side. So that's to explain that a little bit. Um, yes, so we got I got to Leeds and Ben was there in the bus station waiting for me. Um, oh, bless him. And so I said, right, I am ready straight away for a cup of coffee. <laughs> 
so he said well where do you want to go and I said well let's just go to the nearest coffee place I'm really not a coffee snob I don't you know buy the ones in the takeaway plastic things you know I, I'm really not bothered so he took me to the nearest one we could find and he said well I've been to this place it does sell coffee but it's like a bar and I've only been at night time and of course this was just before lunchtime when I got there so he said it might be all right and I said oh you know it doesn't matter let's give it a go so we went to this place and I loved it straight away we walked in it's um it's got quite a 70s vibe to it that's probably why I liked it quite vintage with sort of 70s lamps and um, I don't know it just had a really homely 70s antique vintage vibe um, a bit like a beach shack though as well not that it had loads of straw thatch or anything nearby but and it had loads of like fake greenery and stuff I don't know it just had a really nice feel to it I loved it so we got a cup of coffee and they had um well I would say like sofas but not comfy get sunk in sofas more like you know like friends <laughs> It did remind me a little bit of the Friends Cafe. Um, anyway, there were sofas everywhere. So we got a couple of sofas and sat down and had a cup of coffee and caught up with what we'd been up to and things. It was really lovely. Um, so yes, we did that. And then Ben asked me where I wanted to go in Leeds. And I said I really wasn't bothered because I was only there to see him. So he said, well, I'd quite like to show you some shops that are a bit different. And as far as we know, they, they only have them in Leeds. So I said, well, that sounds good because I'd rather see some, you know, unique shops than go to the usual department type stores that you see everywhere. And Ben said, well, they are quite geeky. And I said, well, no, it's good. I like a bit of geek sometimes you know so we went to a really interesting board game shop and the board games in there were ones that I've never seen before so interesting um, and they were based on well a lot of them were based on video games some of which I'd heard of yes <laughs> So as I was looking, I was like, oh, look, there's one for Stardew Valley. So I played Stardew Valley a little bit. I do like it. It's a bit of like a farming um, video game, but you need an, an mining. You have to go to a mine as well, and then you get these ingredients and you make things. It's really interesting. But I do get quite stressed with this game, and it's not supposed to be stressful. But I find that when you're playing it, you have to do things by a certain time because you have to go to bed <laughs> at night time and then you wake up and another day starts. And I always got caught out and um, I'd be mining away and, yeah, I'd lose track of time and things like that. So I found it quite stressful. So we were looking at this board ga game and Ben was umming and ahhing whether to purchase it. Because um, he also plays Stardew Valley. And I was like, well, is there this, you know, silly time thing on where you have to get to a certain point by a certain time? Anyway, it didn't, it didn't look like there was a time limit. So we were umming and ahhing and we're still thinking about whether we should get it. Um, it might be quite a good, I hope he's not watching, but it might be quite a good Christmas gift or something like that. So, yeah. But there were all sorts of games like that. I know there was a Resident Evil one as well, which I don't play. I don't, but, you know, just I've heard of it, but I don't play it. Um, but, yeah, really interesting games. Um, I can't think of any other examples at the moment, but they were very, very unusual. 
I think the, I think the board game shop was called Travelling Man. I think that's what the name of the shop was. So we spent quite a long time in there looking at the various things. And when I put my head up after looking at all these board games, just noticed that I've missed these four. So I'm just going to quickly fill those in and then move on to another colour. When I put my head up, do some these three tens that outline the different area. I could not believe my eyes. There, right in front of me, were um, like illustrated books, but there were more than books because they were really big. I took a photo of it because I couldn't believe it and I'll put the photograph on screen now. Can you believe it? I was like, that's my diamond painting there. And it was the front cover of one of the um, like illustrated books. Oh, it was so fab. So yeah, I said, oh, I've got to have a picture taken with that. <laughs> So Ben took a photo and he was like, he's so embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, we walked around and outside of the shop, I'm not quite sure what it was all about, but we kept seeing people dressed up like the anime type costumes. So we're trying to work out what was going on. There were also like um, Alice in Wonderland type costumes. We saw... Uh, Tweedledum and Tweedledee. We did see an Alice. They looked fab. Oh, and there was a Mad Hatter. Um, but they looked like they were on some sort of mission. So I don't know if it was like a treasure hunt or, I don't know, searching for Pokemon or whatever. I really don't know, but I'd love to find out. I don't know how I could find out about it, but it was such fun seeing all of the costumes but because they looked like they were busy doing something I didn't want to interrupt and ask them about it <laughs> um, I would though if, if they hadn't have been so busy looking I would have certainly gone to see what that was all about the costumes were so good So we walked a bit further. We, um, yeah, we were trying to find the nice pizza place that we like to have some lunch. Um, so we're walking around and there was a dinosaur in the square where we were walking through. And um, obviously it was like a, somebody in a costume. But wow, it was fab. It was um, a raptor. And he was... I presume it was a he, it might have been a she, but I'll call it a he because it, it seemed to have a male vibe <laughs> about this dinosaur. <laughs> um, so yes, he was bending down to see all the kids and it was quite frightening though, you know, the movements of this thing were so realistic. Um, and I did see that some of the parents were trying to get a photograph of their little tot with the dinosaur. <laughs> but it was so lifelike, it was making them cry. I really shouldn't laugh, but it, it was quite funny because the poor parents just wanted a nice photo of something a bit different. <laughs> I think I'd like to see some of the photos that were taken. <laughs> Uh, anyway, every time this dinosaur bent down, it had like quite a static, long tail. So Ben and I stood and watched for a while and we both looked at each other at the same time and smiled with a little chuckle because we just thought any minute now, this dinosaur is going to swing round and probably knock one of the little stalls or something flying. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Um, I don't know how 
aware the person in the costume was of the tail behind them. But yeah, there was some narrow escapes there, definitely. So they didn't actually do it. Um, yeah. It was funny, but yeah, it was... I would, I might have got a photo, if it had been a bit quieter, I might have got a photo, but I didn't want to push the kids out of the way to, uh, <laughs> to get in the front. <laughs> so, yeah, that was fun. But I don't know what it was about, because there were, there were people with them, um, sort of directing them into certain areas to see people. So I don't know if it was advertising something or... So again, I didn't get the full story on that one. I'm coming to you today with half stories, aren't I? I know I am. Which just is not good enough. <laughs> But we went to the pizza place, we got a seat inside and um, because I'm frightened of wasps. So even when it's warm, I prefer if we're eating to eat inside because otherwise I'd be forever jumping up trying to get away from wasps. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not good at it. <laughs> I'm trying to get over my phobia of them, but it's not working and I do do a silly yelp and I just can't help it. I might um, have to try and do some online hypnotherapy or something to see if I can improve. Anyway, so we sat inside and the pizza place is called something like Franco Manco or something like that. Probably saying it completely wrong but we love it there. The pizzas are nice flavors, quite different. I ordered a ham, wild mushroom and ricotta pizza, which, and they're, they're stone baked as well, the bases of the, mm, the sourdough bases. Absolutely beautiful, but the, oh, it's making my mouth water. <laughs> <laughs> the extra little is it je, 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 oh, I'm not very good at foreign languages je ne sais quoi is it the topping to top the toppings is uh, they put the big pepper grinders on some of that on your pizza and then oh, doused with chilli oil Oh, wow, mm -mm -mm. it is fantastic. <gasps> oh, just beautiful. Really delicious pizzas. So that's what we had for lunch. So once we'd had our pizza, we went for another little browse around. And this time, I'm not sure, I think, I'm not 100% sure, but I think there was a place called uh, Forbidden, was it Forbidden? I want to say Forbidden Corner, but I'm not sure if I'm right, because that's a place, that's like a folly place. I'm not sure, but it was, um, it has merchandise from Pokemon and different character-based things, all sorts of different things. Doctor Who, Star Wars, um, there's figurines, there's those resin figurine head things in there, cushions, backpacks, all to do with that side of um, products. I really wish I could remember. Was it forbidden or... Mm -mm. If I ask Ben, I'll flash it on screen for you. I'm so sorry. My memory is shocking at times. They sell little cushions and little knickknacks and T-shirts and all sorts of things. A really interesting shop. And I think they did like trading cards as well. 
And I know that they definitely do the Pokemon collectible cards because Ben still collects those. Um, yeah, so we had a little look in there. It's really got me thinking though that I definitely want to get um, a diamond painting to do with it. So I'm on the lookout. I'm going online and having little looks and things like that because I think that might be what my diamond painting purchase may be on. I'm not saying next time, but soon, definitely. So that was really good fun. Where else did we go? Oh yes, how could I forget? I'll just change colour, then I'll tell you about it. Uh, what are we are going to do next? Let's do the F. This lovely deep green. We decided to walk back to the bus station and before getting to the bus station, we went into Kirkgate Market. Well, it's quite a big market. There's an outdoor bit where a whole variety of stalls going on there from all sorts of things, stationery, shoes, clothes, really vibrant really interesting i love things like that the different individual market stalls handbags we don't have anything like that now where i live so there we are um and then we went indoors and they have um inside it's like different areas i suppose because there's the food where you can get fish and meat and veg Loads of interesting stalls that have different types of fruits on them. They had wig stalls, beauty. You could get your eyebrows done there. <laughs> Loads. It was so vibrant. I just tried to take it all in. There were um, craft stalls in there. I didn't see any diamond paintings whatsoever, but they had wool and tapestry. They had, oh, what else? Jewellery. There was loads and loads and loads in there to look at. Really interesting. Oh, there were barbers in there as well. Yeah, really, really good. So we spent quite a bit of time in there having a little browse around. They had plants. I mean, I was on the bus, so they, they did have a really big palm tree plant um, in a pot. And the value for money was brilliant. But of course, there was no way I was going to be able to get that on the bus home. <laughs> it was just too big, so I left it behind in the end. Um, may have to drive in and go again. They had like vintage furniture, all sorts. Brilliant. So when we came out of there, I said to Ben, I really need a, another drink. And it was starting to warm up quite a bit unexpectedly. So I didn't, I had like um, a long sleeve top on, well, to the elbows. And... Uh, it got a bit warm, so I said, let's go back to that bar. It's near the bus station. Let's go back and get a drink there because we really liked it. So that's what we did. And this time I had a nice fizzy, it was like a orange pomegranate soda type drink. And Ben said, oh, look, they've got board games. Do you want to play a board game? And I was like, mm. well, okay. You know, so we sat on the sofas where we sat before 
Ben went off to choose a board game and I knew what he would choose. So he came back with chess. <laughs> I wasn't surprised, he loves chess. So I said, let's, first of all, while we have a drink, let's play a lighter game first. What else do they have? So we decided on Boggle. <laughs> have you ever played Boggle? We played it years ago. And Boggle is like a dice game. And there's about 16 dice, all with letters on, in a plastic container. And it's set up like in a four by four grid. I think it's four by four. I'm sure it's not five by five. Um, and you shake the dice to get them into the grid. And then you try and connect the letters together to make words in your head. I think officially you're supposed to write them down, but we didn't want to write them down. Well, shaking this plastic container with all of these dice in, in a bar, yeah, it's quite noisy. <laughs> so I was like, Ben, shh, shh. He was like, I can't shush. So there was like people around us, but anyway, luckily everybody was nice about it. So we... <laughs> We got all the dice into position and then it's quite a quiet game after that point. But like I say, I think normally you have a timer, you write the words you find down and then you see who's got the best or how how many you get points for each word. And But we didn't want to do that. We said we would take it in turns to try and find words and try and beat each other. So that's what we did. <laughs> because, you know... I can be quite competitive <laughs> and so is Ben. So yeah, we do try and outshine each other when we play things like that. So, But it's fun competitive, it's not, you know, well actually we both can take our pram home as it were. That's what you call it if you get a little bit disgruntled because you're losing. <laughs> we can be a bit both like that so yeah. Um, I like to th think that I won, <laughs> but I think if you asked Ben, he would say that he won. <laughs> Maybe we're both as good each as each other, let's say that, before I start a family row on YouTube. <laughs> um, so then, of course, he wanted to play chess. I was like, okay, but I don't know if I've really got the brain power to play. He, to be honest, don't tell him I said this, but he is a lot better at chess than me. So that's probably why he wanted to play it. So anyway, honestly, playing chess in a bar, having a drink, um, yeah, I felt quite sophisticated, really. <laughs> a bit more sophisticated than Boggle. <laughs> I like to think it's a bit brainier, a game. Just doing this wonderful arrow colour. Look at that fabulous green. So yes, felt very intellectual, even though, you know, I'm not, like I say, I'm not a chess queen. Have you seen The Queen's Gambit? It's an amazing programme. I think it's on Netflix. Oh, I loved it. Yeah, that's not me. <laughs> but I think I held my own to a certain point and then, yes, I got beaten. But it was a really fun afternoon. And whilst we were playing chess... Oh, wow, look at the next symbol. I'm doing this arrow up. Oh, wow. Oh, I love it. Um, yes, while we were playing chess, I looked over and there was like um, a gap in between the plants, as it were, in this shabby bar, which was ever so lovely. <laughs> um, a hairdresser's, or I think it... I don't know if it was a barber's or a hairdresser's, but it was like open to the bar. 
I couldn't quite work it out. And I asked Ben and he said, yes, that bar is a the bar is attached to this hairdresser's. And I said, well, if you've been into the bar at night, what happens with the hairdressers? Because there's no door on it to close it off or anything. And he said, oh no, it's just open. So the hairdressers is open on a night as well, whether it's a hairdressers or a barbers, while people are out drinking. Very, very weird. <laughs> and I thought, well, I suppose if you're on a night out and you want your hair done last minute, maybe. <laughs> How bizarre. Another lovely pine green colour this time while we do our tea symbols. So I'm not sure if I want to go out, have a drink and have my hair cut at the same time. If it's a hairdresser's, I might well give it a go one day. <laughs> I mean, the thing is, would you want everybody peering at you while you've got your head in the most unflattering? I mean, let's face it, when you go to the hairdressers, you don't look your best while you're having your hair done, do you? Well, I certainly don't, especially if you're having your roots done. <laughs> hmm. So, yes, I am rather intrigued by that. I did try and take a picture surreptitiously um, to, to show you what I mean. Um, yeah, as I say, I was a little bit like, really? Have I stepped into some sort of parallel universe here? Is this a thing? Is this what people do now? Not sure. <laughs> but I love that it's so different. Not the norm. And my sister recently did um, a little piece on radio because, now, I better just do a little bit of an explanation on this background bit, but my sister is a university lecturer, but she's also had some books published as well because she's a clever thing. And... She's recently been on the radio talking about the fact that she set up a tarot card reading in the village where she lives. So she's also now offering tarot card readings to people and she's giving the money away to the food bank because she's not doing it, for, you know, she's, she's charging but not because she needs the money. She's doing it um, to try and help people at the moment. She felt that people need a little bit of guidance or help at the moment, the way things are. And if she can help in any way, she's prepared to do that. So she's read tarot cards for years and years, ever, ever since she was a teenager. So she was on the radio talking about it. And it was on the BBC West Midlands radio station. So you might even be able to find it if you want to listen in. It was on the 2nd of September at around about 12.15, something like that. I think it was, Leti is it Letitia George who was interviewing her? Um, so she was talking about it. Oh, I'm so proud of her. Anyway, my point is that during that interview, she mentioned about reading tea leaves as well, which is something that is quite old fashioned um, and it's not very common anymore for your tea leaves to be read. And she's got quite into it from an old book that she was left in a will by her great grandma. Um, 
So she's offering that as part of these tarot readings, but she mentioned about, you know, she would be in a in a dream type fantasy world. She would like to open a tea and tarot cafe <laughs> and read tea leaves. And I thought that is so fun and that would be so different. But, you know, I think she's got enough enough on at the moment with her full time lecturing job and the fact that she's getting books published as well and doing these tarot card readings. Oh, she does make me laugh. She really does. But what a different idea that would be. <laughs> I would definitely go. Unfortunately, my sister knows far too much about me to be able to do a tarot reading for me, you know. But she has done them occasionally for me, but I'm a little bit sceptical of the fact that she really knows everything that's going on in my life. So, you know, <laughs> has it really come through the cards or is it because you know that's happening? <laughs> you know, that sort of situation. Oh, dear. But yeah, so that that is so fun. If she ever does it, I wonder if I should work for her. I wonder if I should. <laughs> Do you know, I'd end up being the tea lady, wouldn't I? And she would be the one that's just sitting, doing the lovely stuff and talking to people. <laughs> Maybe she could train me in how to read the tea leaves. Oh, lovely colour, colour, colour. So yes, what a pair we are, aren't we? We really are a pair. <laughs> oh, so yes, that's what I've been up to recently, as well as, you know, doing all sorts of other bits in the background, preparing videos and things like that for you guys. Now I need you to tell me what you've been up to because, you know, you know things that I do and you also know that I love hearing about what you've been up to. So have you done anything interesting that you want to share with our community here? Do leave comments in the comments below if you have. Let us know what diamond paintings you're working on. And um, yeah. I love to hear what everybody's up to. I'm a bit nosy like that, I have to admit. Thank you everybody that recently told me what diamond paintings you're working on, by the way, because it does give me the opportunity to have a look and see, because although I do searching on sites and things, sometimes, when you're going through loads of diamond paintings, you miss certain ones. And then somebody will say, oh, I'm working on this. And because I'm looking at it individually, I'm seeing it better, if that makes sense. I'm looking at one individual painting and thinking about, oh, I love that. And, you know, so it really does help me as well when you do let me know the kits that you're doing. So thank you so much to everybody that did that recently. Just got one E to pop in there. And then we can fill in the beautiful flowers. I do love these containers for that because it's so big the lid, you can just dip your pen in and pick one out. Have you noticed I've still not got any trash in my feather? <laughs> that feather, when I'm working on my, on my diamond art club painting, should really end up as my sweetie bowl. I have got some beside me. Let's pop the sweeties in now instead. <laughs> I've got Ben's old Thomas the Tank Engine from when he was a baby. Oh, But we'll use the feather instead. Mmm. Ooh, which one? I need one that I can eat quickly so that I can still talk to you. I'll have one of those. Have a pick. Mmm. Mmm. It's quite 
a chunky one actually, that one. So sorry, I'm sort of talking with my mouth a little bit full. Right, that's better. I took a little bit of time there to eat that sweetie because um, it's very rude to talk with your mouth full. <laughs> And I know my mum watches these videos and I don't want her to tell me off. <laughs> I brought you up better than that to talk with your mouth full. <laughs> so hi mum if you're watching, I was a good girl. Right, next we're going on to number eight into these blues and lilacs of the flowers. Number eight, where are we? Oh, look, such a beautiful purple. And I know I say this about a lot of the colours. But that is a stunning purple, isn't it? Mm. Those in. Have I got some here? Oh, yes, I do. I'm trying to get four on a row so I can. Uh... So I think I've run out of stories now. I need to have some more adventures. I, of course, have been going to work each day this week, um, but nothing much to report there except my favourite road that I have talked about before that was ever so quiet has now become more and more less quiet and um, yeah I really need to stop talking about it and here I am talking about it again because I think people are picking up on the fact that it's a fabulous road <laughs> and so now I tend to get stuck behind tractors and a few lorries and things like that on my way to work or I am in a line of cars that tend to go at the speed limit, not over, at the speed limit. So I'm not able to sort of have a good look about like I used to. Because when I first started using the road, I could go slightly slower and um, take my time a little bit and have a little look at the things around because there's like hedgerow down both sides of the road where you can see all sorts of birds and sometimes little rabbits and things like that. In fact, the other day, a squirrel ran out across the road right in front of me. That was quite um, amazing. Luckily, I didn't go fast enough to squish him, so I didn't have to hanker on my emergency brakes because I would have been very, very, very sad if that had happened. Um, so, yeah. He was a little lucky one. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so I can't take as much time now looking around me on the way. But, you know, I do like to see the positives in a lot of things. And the positive thing is I am getting to work in plenty of time. <laughs> A little bit earlier so what I intend to do it I listened to Chris Evans as well on the way to work on Virgin Radio I love that they are so positive on a morning and it's so fun and Vassos is just hilarious too um, so that really sets me up for the day and then when I get to work I park and I carry on listening to them and I check my Instagram and um, see what people are doing on their see what diamond painting things are going on um, and if I do get any messages I check them then. So that is a positive thing, the fact that I've got time to be able to do that because I'm getting to work a bit earlier. <laughs> so it's not all bad is it? So that's that area finished now. Just got this flower to do. Number twos are an AB colour. Oh, look at this. Look at those. 
Oh, they are so oh, gorgeous. Oh, wow. I hope when I show you this whole picture that the ABs pop out to you. I might have to try and see the angles on my camera so that you'll be able to see just how much they shine. There is an affiliate code, by the way, for Diamond Art Club in the description box below if you are interested in following the link and getting 15% off. There are also some other affiliate links in the description box, including Spell Queen and Dreamer Designs. So if it's your first purchase, you will get 15% off. And I do get a little bit of money back if you follow that link. So if you do, thank you very much. It is much appreciated. And um, in the past, I have given that money um, to charity or a portion of the money to charity if I've bought a diamond painting as well. So thank you again for that. Okay, let's do the number fives. Ooh, this purple reminds me of bluebells. It's got a hint of blue to it. I don't think there's an official name of bluebell purple in the DMC numbers, but I think this one would be called that if I was naming them. You know, the English bluebells that you see in the woodland in sort of May time. Is it May or maybe even a bit earlier if we're lucky? Monty. That was Monty saying hello. Hopefully he won't keep saying hello to everybody. <laughs> But he is sat next to me. He's been a good boy so far. Sat next to me nice and quietly, hearing my stories. <laughs> if only he could talk, eh? <laughs> I'm sure he would have lots of stories to tell. Probably thankful that he can't. <laughs> Two more colours to do. We'll do those ones. There's like little Saturn symbol there. And lastly, the anchor symbol. Ooh, finishing off with a pink. So summer has now finished, not officially in the UK, apart from if you listen to the weather, I think they now class it as the end of summer. Um, so yes, we'll be heading into autumn. School's gone back. Wow, I don't know where that time went. I really don't. And I don't know if that's because diamond painting takes us so out of ourselves, doesn't it? That I think time just goes. It really does fly by. I mean, if you're doing a diamond painting, you'll know what I mean, I'm sure you will, by saying an hour has gone in a flash. This whip and chat has been longer than I thought it was going to be. So I am so sorry for keeping you for so long. <laughs> <laughs> but I wanted to finish this section. I feel like I haven't finished a section for ages during a whip and chat. So now I have put that right. 
and we'll see the picture in all its entirety now. I've turned the canvas around so that you can see where I've diamond painted. I'm about halfway. We will get some close-ups. I'm hoping that the ABs show because you can especially see them in Harley Quinn's headband, but also there are little strands here and there that just pick up the light and glimmer. It is beautiful. Let's get some close-ups. So here we are. This is top right where you can see those ABs there glimmering so beautifully. And look at the shine on the diamonds too. And here we have Harley Quinn with the bow of her headband, Poison Ivy's hand and the rainbow going down the middle. Now the bits that I want to show you is here with those strands of ABs there and the strands here as well and in Poison Ivy's fingers and down the centre of the painting. Can you see there? I think that's a really good shot to see those little strands of ABs there just picking out some of the details. The side of Harley Quinn's face with like I say the headband being a lot of AB in there but also being picked out in the strands of her hair occasionally and at the side of the headband. The beautiful rainbow colours the vividness of the background as well as her hair. It's incredible. Here is the whole diamond painted area and look at that too on Harley Quinn's shoulder. Isn't that stunning as well? The way that they've used these colours is so clever and it's so bright. I think it's a lot brighter than it shows on screen. Thank you so much for joining me for this whip and chat. I'm loving working on this canvas and I hope that you're enjoying your own diamond painting too. Take care, until next time. Bye everybody. Bye.